Hey, it's Jeff Farrow with Geek Toolkit, and today we're gonna do a review on this Heimvision camera. It's a dual lens camera with a 12 times zoom. I think this video is gonna be interesting. I don't know how this is gonna go, but I tell you what, it's probably not gonna end well. <laughs> Here's the thing. I am a gadget channel. I love gadgets, I love home automation, and I'm here for my subscribers, and my subscribers love home automation. A lot of us love Home Assistant, which is a great off-the-grid home automation solution. And so whenever a manufacturer comes to me and says, hey, we'd like you to review a camera, and we get, YouTubers just get a lot of these. It's something in the YouTube community. There's a number of camera makers out there saying, hey, can you take a look at our camera? Some of them are amazing. I really like the real link camera I looked at and so on. This camera maker, I said, hey, do you support OnVIF and do you support RTSP? Now, if you don't know why those are important, I have a video I can link to you to explain those technologies. I'm not trying to give you techno babble. But for those of us in Home Assistant or doing anything with cameras, that is incredibly important. And so they said, yes. All right, a 12X optical zoom for $50 with OnVIF support. That's like a unicorn. So let's talk about this camera. Unboxing the camera has the camera, the, an ethernet cable, which I thought was interesting because it is a Wi-Fi camera, 2.4 gigahertz Wi-Fi. And then it comes with a mounting hardware. It also has a waterproofing adapter for the ethernet. It's an IP66 camera, not 67, 66. The first six we know is dust intrusion. I talked about this in my lights and LED strip video. The second one, that other six means that you can shoot a jet stream of water at this camera and it'll be fine. That means that's great. You know, if you have wind and sideways rain, this camera can be outside and it's fine. It's an outdoor security camera, so IP66 is important. It has two-way audio, which a lot of these do. That means I can talk to my phone and talk to somebody that's on the camera, they can talk back. That's really cool. It has a siren. The, honestly, if I talk into the thing, it's louder than the siren. And it's, it's a four megapixel. Four megapixel. Now, four megapixel camera is better than 1080p. Two megapixels, 1080p, to kind of give you an idea of what a four megapixel camera would be. Keep in mind, it's a dual lens. One's 12 times zoom and one's not. It has an application. The app is pretty standard. It also has a web page, so you can use this on a PC or Mac, which is great, because not every camera I've talked about can do that. Um, you can save the images, which is also great, and share them. You can save the video. You can zoom with the app. You can get uh, turn the light on. It has a spotlight that's pretty bright, actually impressively bright. I actually like how much of my backyard it lit up. So everything sounds pretty good. So why is it that I'm considering this camera the way that you should never build a camera? Well, let's start talking about things a little bit deeper. When they say a four megapixel camera, what they did is they have two lenses on the camera and they said, well, this is a two megapixel and this one's a two megapixel, so it's a four megapixel camera. That to me is very deceiving. Each lens is two megapixel, which is a 1080p camera. You can only get one shot off of each lens at a time. I can't pull in both lenses and get a four megapixel system. And even if I could, one of them is 12 times zoom. So they're not even something I can composite. That means I really have a 1080p camera with a 12 times zoom. That's really what we're looking at here is a two megapixel camera. Okay, that's a minor nit, let's say. What about the OnVIF integration? This is Geek Toolkit, and I come here to bring you a technical view of this. And I know that a lot of you are very technical as well. So let's talk about this as if we know what we're doing here. We're gonna load up OnVIF Device Manager and we're gonna verify the OnVIF compatibility of this camera. And what you see immediately is this camera starts falling over very quickly. There's a number of things that are not implemented, a number of errors, and it just really doesn't look right. You can tell right away that something's not right with their OnVIF integration. I would not consider this OnVIF supported. I consider it very baseline in that it can be detected, but that's about it. All right, what does that mean? Well. It does have RTSP streams. You can get them exposed, but there's only two. What those two are is your standard 1080p stream off of the far camera, not, not the zoom near camera. The far camera will give you a 1080p stream and then you have the substream of it, which is a lower resolution, just typically used for previews. That's it. That means there is no RTSP stream for that 12 times zoom. I've asked two different support pe people where is that RTSP stream? I've done scans on the camera. I've done, 
I mean, I've done everything I can think of to attack this camera to try to find the stream myself. And if it was truly on VIF, that would be showing up in the descriptors. There's nothing there that I can see for the 12 times zoom. Now, if you're a home automation enthusiast and you get this camera and you want access to that 12 times zoom because you're gonna do license plate recognition or any of the cool things you could do with 12 times zoom cameras, none of that works. It, you can't do any of it. So uh, I was incredibly disappointed. The OnVIF integration isn't great. I don't have RTSP streams like I expected. It's not four megapixels. It's not PoE, which it wasn't advertised as it, but it would have been really handy to power it with PoE. The siren sucks. Uh, the other thing that is getting really tiring with these cameras is a lot of them are using pixel motion detection. Now I've actually turned this down to medium sensitivity. What that means is if a pixel changes, the camera will alert. And I talk about this in my camera primer as well. Here's the problem when you add that, and, and I, I see all these manufacturers doing this. They add lights to the camera, which draws bugs to the camera, and then they have motion sensing. That camera has been recording for the last four hours almost nonstop because of either hearing the frogs outside croaking because it has sound triggers or because bugs have been flying around it. It supports a micro SD card, that's awesome. Maybe you can write off all of that. You're like, Joe, I just wanna use the camera with the app. I'm looking for a review. I'm not a home automation enthusiast. Let me use the camera. Tell me how good the camera is. Let me tell you one more thing the final nail in the coffin for this camera, as far as I'm concerned, until we get a firmware upgrade. The camera has a default password of one, two, three, four, five, just like your luggage. And that password is not changeable. And it has a hard-coded username of admin. So the account on the camera is hard-coded, unchangeable, and exposed. The other part of this, I know if you're not horrified about that, the other part of this is it comes with an offline setup, which would allow you to set the camera up without hooking it up to the internet. So maybe if I squint and try to really fit everything in, I could make this camera be okay, right? The offline setup didn't work at all. And I looked at other people on, on reviews and saw this a number of times. The offline setups just seems to be broken at this point on the camera. So you can't offline set up, which means the only way to set it up is to create an account, which cloud connects the camera, and then it has a hard-coded password. I'm sorry, I can't recommend this camera. The only thing I can recommend this camera for is as a lesson of what not to do when you make a security camera. Heimvision, if you create an updated firmware and you want me to try again on, on reviewing this, I'm willing to, but for now, I'm unplugging this camera. I appreciate you sending it out to me, but I just can't, I just can't in good faith in any way, shape or form recommend this. I can't even recommend it to watch my 3D printer, not with a hard coded password and a web, no, I just can't. I'm sorry. Thank you for watching. I'm Joe Farrow with Geek Toolkit. I will always give you an honest review. You, you know that. Uh, I just, I got nothing for this camera. It's so bad.